Hello, this is Mr. Fide, and I have a lot of information I want to go through today, so I will thank you for stopping by, even though I am not a mental health professional, and as always, I am speaking in my own opinion while applying Margaret Singer's book, Cults in Our Midst, to Scientology. We left off talking about three categories in the process of mind control, and those are unfreezing, change, and refreezing. And I would like to go into Singer's subcategories. There are six of them, and we will, of course, start with number one. Number one. Keep the person unaware of what is going on and how they are being changed one step at a time. If you remember earlier in chapter 3, I mentioned how if a frog was placed in water of a comfortable temperature and the heat was slowly turned up, he would be boiled alive without knowing it. The same applies to cultic groups. These groups are pure model groups. When you go into a group as an outsider, things seem a little strange. When you get used to the environment, it is actually because you are being adapted to their ways of doing things. Number two, control the person's social and physical environment, and especially control the person's time. You don't have to move into your home like members of the Church of Scientology did with this man. However, this woman did go undercover in Scientology, and it is shocking how much of her time was controlled from getting information about a book. It took 40 minutes. She was then asked to fill out a stress test at home and return it the next day. Upon returning, after an hour wait, she felt her personality was attacked for an hour and received several hours worth of classes before a hard sales pitch that ended well after business hours. When she said that she could get money, but it would take a little time, they were quick to offer suggestions to get it sooner. The following day, they kept her until the parking meter had expired at which time they escorted her to her car so she could move it. She then was escorted from office to office for the rest of the day and even escorted to the restroom. This is standard procedure according to Stuart Boot, who was formerly fifth in command of the same mission. This seems to fit the model in Scientology, but we will discuss that a little more later. Number three, systematically create a sense of powerlessness in the person. One way to make a person feel powerless is financially. However, people of any financial level can become victims of thought reform if removed from a support system. This does not need to be friends or family, even though the thought of losing those could be very traumatic and Scientology has ways of handling those problems. For example, it's often reported when the rich and famous are being courted by Scientology they often form an entourage of Scientologists. Celebrities often live isolated lives for privacy and are often accustomed to receiving their information through liaisons. Number four, manipulate a system of rewards and punishments in such a way as to inhibit the behavior that reflects the person's former social identity. Old patterns of behavior are considered irrelevant. The suppression of emotions and especially sexual behavior is often used in mind control. I offer, for example, reports from Astra Woodcraft, who claims Sea Org members have been subjected to two years in the RPF for having premarital sex, and I have heard reports of up to five years. Number five, manipulate a system of rewards and punishments to promote the group's ideology and or belief system. Tom Cruise, in his most famous Scientology video, said he considered it to be a privilege to call yourself a Scientologist. I also would like to point out this video called Tom Cruise's Secret $100,000 Birthday on the Free Wind, and I have no idea what it takes for a Scientologist to enter one of their many celebrity centers. Some former Scientologists claim that organized Scientology protected a perpetrator of a sexual assault because he was a good earner for his area. Furthermore, the parents of the girl were told that if they reported the incident to the police, psychiatrists would take their daughter away from them. Members of Scientology seem to have a strong distrust for the industry of psychiatry, as we see pictured here from this interview between Tom Cruise and Matt Lauer. Number six, put forth a closed system of logic and an authoritarian structure that permits no feedback and refuses to be modified except by the leadership or executive order. For this section, I contacted fellow YouTube user 13 Heathens, 
who has been doing a chapter-by-chapter -chapter review of the public text the Church of Scientology claims to have sent to every library in the country at the cost of its members. In short, he replied with the following quotes and page numbers. So if your local library is one of the few that is actually stocking the books, you will easily be able to check to be sure none of the quotes are taken out of context. That seems to be the claim of many Scientology defenders. The closed system of logic Singer speaks of most, the problem that you are having cannot be with the organization. It can only be because you are not following the group's teachings, or in Scientology's case, the tech, correctly. At this time, I would like to discuss what Stacy Brooks, a well-known Scientology critic, claimed that Scientology critics found the most disturbing about the practices of Scientology, and that would be the TRs. Although we touched on them briefly when discussing people's time could be manipulated, this strong claim made me want to take a closer look. And although my knowledge of thought reform is limited to what can be described in Lifton and Singer's books, when watching two former members demonstrate, I could not help but think that the process looked familiar. The TRs are practiced in the following way. Two people sit in chairs across from each other, as perfectly still as possible, and when the recipient of the TR makes the mistake, he is immediately corrected. This process will go on until the instructor is satisfied, and I am told that it could last for hours and sometimes even days. Many people say that this reminds them of hypnosis, although I can see where they could draw that comparison, what it reminds me of is dog training. I have a friend who is a professional dog trainer, and I am told that dogs instinctively have a pack mentality. In order to have a happy dog, he needs to know his place in the pack. Some dog trainers will stare at the dog until he looks away, showing him their dominance. Humans have been trained by society to show different levels of dominance in different situations. Most learn to take charge in some situations, and also learn to let others take charge in other situations, especially if it's something completely foreign to them, or they have paid a lot of money and want to get the most out of it. When training a dog, all that's needed is patience and immediate correction when the dog does not do what is expected of him. I have a link to this quick demonstration of dog training in the info box. If you feel like you have been negatively affected by the Church of Scientology, there are places you can go. Lawrence Willersheim has set up a website called FactNet that can give you much better information than I can offer. He also has a video message posted on YouTube. You can see that message by typing in the title of the video you see above his picture. And there is also a link to both the video message and his website in the info box. Please stop by next time when I will be starting Chapter 4 of Margaret Singer's Cults in Our Midst. I'm Mr. Fide.